Hello everyone. Welcome to Epic SaaS and the series of Salesforce development. Today I'll be discussing about batch epics in Salesforce. What is batch epics? How to use batch epics and why to use batch epics in Salesforce. But before we deep dive into the today's topic, here's a short introduction about me. My name is Yash Sethi. I am a senior Salesforce developer, a trailblazer mentor and the co-founder of Crazy Cloud YouTube channel. If you want to connect with me, you can scan this LinkedIn QR code. You can connect me on LinkedIn and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel using the YouTube QR code. So first, let's understand what is batch epics. Batch epics is an asynchronous transaction in Salesforce, which allows the processing of a large data sets of recording small and manageable chunks. So the purpose of batch epics is designed to efficiently handle bulk data operations and avoid governor limits associated with synchronous processing. Okay. So what happens, uh, what, what will you do if I tell you that uh, you are having five lakh records, five lakh account records and uh, onto those all account records, you need to, uh, you need to append epics hours in the name name field correct so how can you do that you cannot query 5 lakh records you cannot even uh, query 5 lakh records into a single uh, single synchronous transaction right that's where batch epics comes into the picture if you want to perform any business logic on to the large data set you can always use batch epics batch epics can query up to 50 million records correct and after querying those records, it will just, you know, divide all the records into some smaller and manageable chunks, let's say five lakh records, and it can, uh, it can uh, divide those five lakh records into some smaller chunks and uh, onto those chunks, it will perform the business logic one by one, correct? So it is, this is how batch epics works. <clears throat> Here is why to use batch epics. Bulk data processing, as I've already told you that if you want to perform any business logic on a large data set, you can always use batch epics. Avoiding governor limits. If you want to, if you are querying, if you are querying the large data set into a, into a synchronous transaction, you will definitely hit some governor limits. But in batch epics, you can avoid the governor limits. <laughs> It prevents hitting governor limits associated with the synchronous transactions. Then scalability. It enhances performance and scalability by processing data in chunks. Correct. Now, what is batch epics and what are the different methods in batch epics? Let, listen this very carefully. Batch epics is nothing but a simple epics class which implements some interfaces like database dot batchable context. It is nothing, nothing but a normal epics class, correct? Which is having, uh, which only have only three methods, right? You cannot, uh, you cannot customize this batch epics. You cannot uh, write any method uh, methods according to you. It only have three methods. First is the start method. Another one is the execute method. And the, and the third one is the finish method. Start method, method initiates the batch process and returns a query locator for record retrieval. So the work of the start method is to fetch the data using the SQL. So start method is basically used to fetch all the records onto which you want to perform the business logic. So Let's suppose uh, start method have uh, start method have uh, fetched fifty lakh records, correct? Now this will this this uh, start method will uh, pass on the fifty lakh records to execute method. Into execute method, the these records will get divided into some chunks, perform some business logic. And after performing the business logic onto all the records, all the 50 lakh records, the execution will go to the finish method. Correct. 
so suppose if you are having 2000 records uh from if you got 2000 records uh, from the start method and let's say the chunk size was 200 which means the execute method will get uh, executed 10 times and after executing the 10 times or uh, after executing the business logic onto the all of the records only then the execution will go to the finish method correct finish method uh, runs only one time into a single batch apex and is executes after all batches are processed providing a cleanup opportunity cleanup means if you want to perform any batch any post execution logic like let's say if you want to send an email that your batch epic uh, is successfully ran right then you can use finish method finish method can also be used to call another batch class if you want to call a batch class from another batch class you can only do that in a finish method you cannot call any batch class into an execute method or into a start method you can but you can call the another batch class into a finish method correct so let me summarize it start method is used to fetch the records execute method is used to uh, process the business logic into all the records and finish method is used to do post execution logic <clears throat> this is an example of batch apex that how batch, batch apex works so this is nothing but a normal apex class which implements database.batchable as object this is an interface which uh, implements while working with batch apex then we have three methods one is start another one is execute and the third one is finish correct now in the start method what we are doing we are just writing a query select id comma name from account and you just returning this returning this database dot get query locator query why we are using database dot get query locator because database dot get query locator can uh, retrieve records up to 50 million correct now suppose uh, this query has returned 1000 records so now into this execute method the data will get divided into let's say 100 100 records which will create 10 10 chunks because 100 record per chunk correct <clears throat> then the execute method uh, will accept two parameters one is the list of account which will return by this start method and one is the database context correct now we are just performing the business logic updated by job and update acc list once this execute method completes its transaction complete its business logic on to all of the records all of the chunks then only the finish method will get called. Correct. This database dot batchable context is a parameter for all the methods, all the three methods. Correct. So this is how the batch apex looks like. It is normal class which implements database dot batchable as object and three methods. Correct. <laughs> now, can you can you make any callout in batch apex? Yes. You can create any callout in the batch epics, but you have to implement database dot allow callouts. If you do not write database dot allow callouts, you cannot call any API. You cannot make any callout in the batch epics. Correct. Let's see what is database dot stateful. So batch epics is stateless by default. If a batch process requires information to be shared across transactions, implementing a stateful interface is necessary. By specifying <laughs> database.stateful in the class definition, what is class definition? This is class definition, correct? Class definition, it becomes possible to maintain state across these transactions. For example, if a batch job is executing a specific logic and there is a need to send an email at the end of the batch job, containing details of both successful and failed records. Utilizing this stateful in the class definition is essential. So let me summarize it for you. 
what is what is stateful so suppose your apex transaction your execute method have performed the business logic on to 5000 records out of those 4000s are successful and 1000 got failed so how to go get the record ids of successful and failed records to get the uh, record id or to get the complete detail of the transaction we use database.stateful or to the class definition <laughs> by default it is it is stateless we cannot we cannot get the information about the transaction if you want to get the information about the transaction successful or uh, failures you can use database.stateful here is how to execute a batch epics. How to decide, uh, how how to decide how many records uh, one chunk can have. Correct. So this is how you execute a batch class. This is your class name. First, you need to create an object of your class. Then just write database dot execute batch. It will take two parameters: the object of your class and then the batch size correct 200 the, the second parameter is, is optional if you do not write the second parameter it will take 200 by default the minimum is one the maximum is 200 2000 correct what are the limits of batch apex up to five queued or active batch jobs are allowed for apex in a single time, only five active batches, active batch jobs can batches, batch jobs are allowed. Correct. <clears throat> the database dot query locator object has a limit of returning a maximum of 50 million records. That is why we use database dot query locator bit because it can search, it can query up to 50 million records. If the result set exceeds this limit, the batch is promptly terminated and marked as failed. If no chunk size is defined, it takes 200 as default. Minimum chunk size should be 1, maximum can be 2000. The maximum number of batch executions is 2,50,000 per 24 hours. Which means you can only, not only, but yes, uh, in a day, in a 24 hours period, you can have a 2,50,000 of batch executions. Correct? Now, this is your assignment. Uh, let's first let's see. Let's see how this class works. Let's create one class. I'll go to our developer console. Uh, let's create a class with the same name. Okay. This is the normal class. Correct. Let's copy our code here. Copy. And paste it over here. And let's see what is this. Okay, now it is, it will look like easy. So this is nothing but a normal Apex class, which implements database.batchable context. So now it has become a batch class, correct? It has three param three methods. One is the start, another one is the execute, another one is the finish. All the three parameters, uh, all the three method takes one parameter for sure, which is database.batchable context. Now the work of start method is to get the results, get the records, to retrieve the records. So here, how this is how we return the records using the database.query locator because it can search up to it can query up to 50 million records. Then it will send the send the retrieved records to the execute method. 
and uh, it will accept as a the list as a parameter it will perform the business logic like this and update the SAC, SAC list now let's see how to run this class to run this class you just need to go to your developer console or uh, what anonymous window let's say i'm just creating one object my class new batch class now database dot execute batch and my class uh, what if i just leave it like this i do not give it to a second parameter it will take the second parameter as default 200 but what if i just want to give it 10 and execute the batch the batch got executed and uh, as we know that we have 560 records select id from account from account 563 records it means that uh, the batch uh, got executed 57 times correct if you go to the logs you see batch epic chunk handler chunk handler chunk handler so 57 times it got executed because we had 56 563 records and the what we have given 10 as a chunk size correct if we go to the all accounts you see updated by bad job updated by bad job all the records have been updated correct so this is how batch epics works <coughs> this is your assignment you can take it as an example update the industry field on all account records where the created date equals to current date and 30. See, set the industry to the banking. This is the business logic. This is the query and use a chunk size of 300 records. So that's it for today, guys. And I hope that was very much informative video for you. And if you have any doubts, you can always ask me into the comment section. Thank you so much.